is the story, the fantastically true story, of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. You're about to see the Communist Party's complete disregard for human rights as they affect their plan of sabotage. I'm afraid that's all I want, honey. Herb, do you have to finish that work tonight? I hate to see you go back up to the secret room. Oh, well, it won't take too long. Besides, I think I feel a little better now that you made me eat something. I've got all the notices to the cell members addressed in code, and I've got a little bit more work to do on the FBI report. But you're worn out. You haven't had any sleep to speak of in the last three nights. Well, it's not 9 o'clock yet. I want to get all that stuff in the mail down at the corner before the last pickup. Oh, uh, by the way, you think you could arrange to have the kids out of the way day after tomorrow during the meeting? It's from 2 to 4 o'clock. I suppose so. But why did Comrade Goss have to have a cell meeting here? I don't know, but he's the cell leader. He gives the orders. I hoped when we moved to this house, we could have some freedom. Well, it's because it's a new neighborhood that we're in that Goss wants it here. I think he's out here from Pro 4 headquarters to break up the cell, hand out some new assignments. I still don't like it. Hmm. I don't either. How would you like your wife to quit fussing at you? <laughs> you got a right to let off steam. Concentrate, Philbrick. See if you've got everything right. The travel brochure means a special cell meeting. The printer's error slips tell the times of arrival. The return address on the envelopes will say the meeting is here. Okay, list the members and the different times they get here for the FBI. And as soon as you can, get some sleep. time of night. What is Mr. Philbrick? What you making? Some dresses for my little girls. They're in bed where you ought to be. Why? Bet you you could stab somebody with those scissors. Oh, that was clumsy, Philbrick. Now this place is a mess. Okay, okay, address the letters on the typewriter downstairs. There's some envelopes in the dining room cupboard. Does your mother know you're roaming around after dark? She's out playing bridge. My sitter's asleep, so I came over. Where's Mr. Philbrick? He's upstairs and he's busy. I'll get him. Bobby, come back here. I want him to fix my glider. He'll fix me if I let you go up there. glider and go on home, Bobby. Come over tomorrow after school. If Mr. Philbrick can fix it, he will. But I want to know if he can. Hey, he's coming down. Hey, how'd you get in? I've been trying to get him out. Will you fix my glider, Mr. Philbrick? Uh, Bobby, I'm an advertising man, not an aeronautical engineer. Why don't you get your daddy to fix it? He's not home. He's never home. He's always on the road selling things. You want me to fix that? What'd you do, run it into a lawnmower? A car ran over it. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. You go home now, and I'll get you another one tomorrow. Is that a deal? But I want to stay here and watch you work the typewriter. Well, you're not going to stay here and watch me work the typewriter. Now, come on, I'll see you later. Yes, sir. How did you do that? Uh, takes a man's hand. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can stuff these brochures into the envelopes as I address them. This one's for Bryce. He's due at 2 o'clock. They're for the meeting. This one's for Elliot. Then Allard comes in. Then Thomas. Then finally Rhoda Cooper. I've got it. Oh, there are uh, stamps here in my wallet. pickup. Hey. What's the matter, Herb? Forgot my FBI report. It's upstairs. It should be in the mail tonight. Well, can't you mail it in the morning from downtown? Andrews will get it almost as quickly. I'll take these to the mailbox now. You've just got to get some sleep. Okay, honey. You twisted my arm. Will you lock up? I'll do it when I get back. I want to get that FBI report ready for mailing. Well, I'll hurry then before the girls wake up. Okay. Where is it, Philbrick? What did you do with it? Brochures. There's only one place it could have gone. Out to the cell members with those notices. Oh, Herb, no. Must have. I'd have seen it last night. I was upstairs and down twice. Well, can anybody else read it? Wasn't it in code? No, it was just in the usual gobbledygook I use with the FBI. It wouldn't be hard to decipher. And I left the names of the cell members in the clear. Oh, Herb, it's my fault. I folded the brochure. No, it's not your fault. If anybody's to blame, I am. I got careless. A counter-spy can't afford to let up for one single second. But it's happened. You know what the party will do. Yeah. Maybe there's still time to intercept those letters. Even this late. Mike Andrews, the FBI. He'll know what to do. Well, Herb, phone him from here. Too dangerous. Especially now.
those letters were picked up last night, well, they're probably already in the works for delivery today. Oh, the meeting's tomorrow. Well, we haven't got much time. Now, you get down to the main post office and fill out blanks for the stop orders and the letters. All right. And don't say why. Just say a serious error has been made. And I'll contact the post office inspectors and do what I can to hurry things up. Well, that'll help, Mike. I'm at my wit's end. I, I can't even think. Why don't you meet me at the main post office? All right, I'll see you in the alley as soon as I get through inside. Right. Stop orders are in, Mike. Boy, what a lot of red tape. Yeah, some of it will be cut now. I got a hold of an inspector I know, Burns. I just left him a minute ago. Now, he's already calling the branches, the carrier stations, about your stops. Wonderful. And if it works. Now, we might pick up a couple of letters at the sorting racks. You know, they red tagged them, but Burns thinks they've gone out to the routes already. Well, if they have, I'm really sunk. Well, now, take it easy. They might be picked up on the routes. And before you commit suicide, just remember, oh, it's a miracle something like this hasn't happened before. You know, you've been pretty lucky, Herb. I could use a little more luck right now. Uh, Burns tells me that even if we get all the letters back, we won't know which one has your report in it until late today. You see, he can't open them. Nobody can but you, the sender. You've got to identify them after they've been returned here to the main post office. Yeah, they mentioned that. Now, are you sure the reports were sent out with those letters? What else could have happened to it? Okay. Now, can you make duplicates of the notice letters and drop them off in Burns' name at the carrier station near your house? To replace the ones he's picked up. Hey, that's an idea. Yeah, the post office is sharp. Now, he can deliver the duplicates by today by special handling. I'm going to go along with him. And in an hour or so, we'll know how our luck holds out. Mm -hmm. Phone me, will you? Yeah. Mike, what if we don't have any luck? What about Eva and the kids? So what if the party decides... Just to... you be careful, Murph. The FBI will try not to drop the ball. Yeah, no. Letters, Philbrick. Now get to that phone you used two hours ago and call Andrews. Two hours. Seems like a year. Twelve eight thirty-seven. Twelve eight thirty-seven. Andrews. Hey, put him on, please. Yeah, Herb. Well, we've got some news. Now the Thomas letter was caught in sorting. Burns nests the Bryce letter from the carrier on his route, and we're checking a storage box now. Ah, found the bundle, eh? Hey, hold on. Maybe we've got the Elliot letter. This it? Oh, yeah. Oh, that'll help. My guy's on the phone now. Have you told him the rest of it? Not yet. I was right. The Elliot letter turned up. Oh, that's terrific, Mike. How about the others? What? I'm sorry. There's nothing further we can do legally. He can have the three we've got by about noon. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And uh, thank Mr. Burns for me. Yeah, could you meet me in the park after I finished at the library? I'll be busy for a while. Good. Comrade Allard's and Rhoda Cooper's both delivered. Can you get them back before they open them? All right, Philbrick. Let's see how good a thief you are. Allard's office, Philbrick. Just hope he hasn't been there yet. There he is. Okay, find out if he's opened his letter. Mr. Allard. Uh, well, hello, Mr. Taylor. What brings you around here so early? Did you get your notice of the meeting tomorrow? I... Could you make out the time, 2.30? Oh, yes, yes, that'll be fine. Uh, well, is there going to be a meeting or isn't there? Well, of course. Everything's just as scheduled. Why are you so nervous? Well, I, I share this office. Somebody might be watching. I got the notice, 2.30 tomorrow. Now go away. Well, well that's fine, Mr. Phelan. <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> Would Allard be so scared of a simple party contact? 
Or did he find your report in his letter? He didn't even ask why you were checking. Well, no luck here. Try Comrade Rhoda's house. Still in the box, so she's probably not home. Don't ring the bell. Just pretend to. There's the notice letter. You've got to get it out. Would you like to explain why you're pilfering my mail, comrade? I... I thought you weren't at home. That's no reason. There's a special meeting in the cell at my house tomorrow. I, I made a mistake, and either your notice or Comrade Allard's worried me. It doesn't worry you that someone is liable to see you and call the police? That you're attracting unwelcome attention to me by coming here at all? I just wanted to correct the error. Without my knowing, of course. Comrade Goss was mad to have left you in charge of the cell. He'll hear about this. Please, may I have the letter? You can't have it. What time is the meeting? Comrade Goss is seeing us all separately. You're last at 3 o'clock. Now you won't need the notice. I? Last? Goodbye, Comrade. How can you bungle things so badly, Philbrick? Rhoda's always wanted your scalp. Now she's got it. Uh oh the neighbors. Don't forget that sample case, Philbrick. Post office? I'm afraid I put you and Mr. Burns through a lot of trouble for nothing. I drew three blanks. No report. No, I mean when you took off to rob the mailbox. Isn't that what you did after we talked on the phone? Yeah, it didn't get far. <clears throat> Allard had already gotten his letter and opened it. Rhoda Cooper caught me. Wouldn't let me see hers. I can't be sure, Mike, but it must lie somewhere between those two. So we're still in the dark, huh? Well, did you check your house again when you went home to make the duplicate? Sure, sure. Eva's looking, too. No sign of the report. You know, if Allard or Cooper were on to you, the party goons would be on your heels by now. Mm. We didn't see anybody suspicious around your office when you went there. You know, I've worked with a lot of commies. Wouldn't the party want the exposed members out of sight before they clobbered me? Maybe. Well, don't let the suspense kill you, hurt. Now, I'll be cruising the neighborhood during the meeting. Wait a minute. Bobby Masters. He was in the house last night. He, he broke his toy glider. Mike, I'll get back to you. You eat the pit, Mr. Philbrick. Bye. Yeah, well, Bobby, I'm, I'm glad you like it. Look, uh, last night when you were sailing the other one around here, did you happen to notice a letter I've been looking for? I didn't see any letter. Well, uh, look, Bobby, it was either here on the table or maybe underneath. I might have dropped it. A letter? Uh-uh. Hey, Mr. Philbrick, will you come out and show me how to sail this one, will you? No, Bobby, you sail it by yourself. I got to get back to the office and do some work. Don't you ever have any fun? Gosh, you and my dad, you're sure a couple of guys. Yeah, well, you run along now, kid. Well, there goes our last hope. Well, can I be here tomorrow, Herb? No, darling. No, if Allard or Comrade Rhoda denounced me to Goss, I'd rather you and the kids weren't here. I'll see you tonight. Philbrick's two are there now. First two will be Bryce and Elliot. Allard and Thomas should be at the place. You see, Allard and the woman are the ones Philbrick's warning over. I thought I saw movement. Yeah, Philbrick's come out on the porch with a man. Mm-hmm. That would be Allard. Philbrick act like he's in trouble? No, no, not a bit. Believe me, comrade, I didn't mean to embarrass you yesterday. Mm. As it happens, you didn't. I had to report the incident to comrade Goss, however. Yeah, yeah, sure. Turn that thing away. Here comes a woman.
You better move further off down the street. We may have spoiled things for Philbrick already. I know what it is to make a mistake, so I went easy on you with Gosh. Thanks. But uh, be careful with Comrade Rhoda. She phoned me last night in a stew about you. <laughs> Say, she got something else on you? What do you mean? Shh. She's here. Save it. Comrade? What were you two plotting? What are those men doing down at your corner, Comrade? What men? Are they spies? Hmm. You seem to be going. I suppose I scared them off. Look, Comrade, that man's a surveyor. How do I know what he's doing? Is Comrade Goss ready for me? No, he's still with Comrade Thomas. You'll have to wait. Very well. What I'm going to tell him will keep a little longer. Rhoda's been in there with Goss almost half an hour. She's the one who got your FBI report. She has to be. Why don't you get the family and run for it while you've got the time? That you're attracting unwelcome attention. Eva. I left the children with Hazel. I couldn't stand being away from you. I was just coming to get you. It's all over? No, I don't think so. I think I think Comrade Rhoda's spilling everything to Goss. She got the report? That's the way it was, Comrade. I... They've stopped talking. They must have heard you come in. Come on. What did I tell you? He's brought someone else into the house, and no one was supposed to be here after me. Don't break! came home unexpectedly. Perhaps if you and Comrade Rhoda are finished, she can stay. It's Comrade Eva. This is the spy you suspected? Why, it I... It seems to me you're more interested in discrediting Comrade Herb than in your duty. There's no room for jealousy in the party. Forget the assignment I spoke of. You couldn't handle it. You may go, Comrade. Your case is about as sad as hers. Come with me. I don't know what to do about you people in my cell. Not one of you qualified for more important work. I'm sorry, comrade. Are you letting your nerves get you? No, oh, maybe we're all just a little bit rushed. What is this? Is this the way you amuse yourself, comrade? Your FBI report, Philbrick. Bobby's airplane. The little devil did find it. Answer me. I suppose you cut out paper dolls, too. Well, the fact is that belongs to one of the children. Just a moment. Let's say this is an object lesson for you, comrade. Too many party members are like children. Hello, Mrs. Philbrick. I didn't try to get in. Mr. Philbrick here, his car's out front. For heaven's sake, Bobby, go home. What is this, Grand Central Station or a Dane nursery? Oh, well, let me stay. I want him to look at the airplane he brought me. Where did this boy come from? Well, he's, he's the neighbor's child. What? He has the run of the house? Well, it, it seems impossible to keep him out. Hey, you found my airplane. Give me it. You want it, do you? Tell me what you heard when you came in here. I didn't hear anything. Give me it. Make him give me it, Mr. Philbrick. <laughs> well, you'd think I was the big bad wolf. To look at you two. Well, I'll be going, Philbrick. Oh. I'll let myself out. You check with me tomorrow. We've got work to do. All right, Mr. Goss. Bobby, why did you tell me a fib? This is the letter I've been looking for, the one you said you didn't find. That wasn't any letter. A letter comes in an envelope. It's folded. That was just a piece of paper, the right size for an airplane. Uh-huh. Okay, Bobby, forget it. Now will you look at my airplane, Mr. Philbrick? You know, Bobby, it's amazing how you can do so much damage without even trying. I don't have to try. It's easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frame that for me, will you, Mike? Yeah, it almost frames you. Do you need the reminder? No, on second thought, I think you better burn it. No, I think I'll put it in the files. You know, some of us can use an object lesson like yours. So long, Herb. So long, Mike.
made into a toy airplane, proved once again that a counter-spy can never relax his vigilance and care against the ever-present possibility of disclosure. Next week, another story from the files of a man who spent nine fantastic years as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation.